2013 marks the, the 20th year of my career. Spoken word has been my job for 20 years. It's my profession. It's what I do when I wake up. It's what I, it's been my only real job since I um, was in high school. Um, in that time, uh, to date, I've now uh, published nine books, um, six albums. I've performed in 16 countries around the world. And it's been very good to me, and I believe anything that you, you put yourself in, there's so much that, that comes back to you. So um, in terms of spoken word, what is this spoken word thing? You know, um, ever since people have had the ability to communicate, we have always packaged our culture, our history, our norms, our morals in art. It's always been in dance, in drawings. It has always been um, through stories that we tell generation to generation. And if you go to, you know, look at native cultures, look at African cultures, there have always been people in those cultures and their role was to preserve the culture by sharing the stories, by sharing the art. And you go from generation to generation and a lot of those times those people were revered because of their ability to contain so much of the culture and share it with the people, right? So I believe that in its purest sense, we as spoken word artists have a responsibility to be looking at culture, looking at how we preserve that culture through the things that we create. As artists, we need the audience and the audience needs us. There's a, there's a duality and a connection where we coexist with one another. <laughs> However, we have this genre where now everybody who wants to just says, I am a spoken word artist with no training from nobody. There's nothing that they can say that they've done. We just give ourselves this label and we often wonder, I mean, we're talking with MT and stuff where we're saying, you know, a lot of... Um, you know, funders, arts councils and stuff, they don't want to fund spoken word. And the reason they don't want to fund spoken word is because we give the idea that anybody can do it. Right? There's no, there's no, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to achieve to claim this title. It's just that, well, if anybody could do it, why would I fund something that anybody could do? If anybody could write on a napkin and then get up on stage and say, hey, I'm a spoken word artist, why would I invest my money into this thing? If I'm gonna invest my money into it, I wanna know that there are people who are practitioners of this thing, who have studied with people, who have learned, who are in the business of trying to get better at what it is that they're doing. We have to come up with a standard and a definition of how you are able to earn the title I'm a spoken word artist because if your child has a fever and you, you know, touch them and you say, okay, yes, you're, you're kind of hot, you need to lie down and take it easy, you cannot then go and say that you are a doctor. That does not make any sense because when somebody says they're a doctor, there are certain assumptions that we make about the things you have done to become a doctor. You have to do certain things to earn the title, yet a spoken word artist there's nothing you, all you have to do is get up sit on stage once and then you call yourself this thing. Right? You have to value your currency, right? And the words are the currency that we use as spoken word art. It's really about labeling and, and titles, right? And it's very interesting because to me, nowadays, spoken word is in thing. So everybody is a spoken word artist. Everybody is a poet. You, you go on stage two times, and now you're a spoken word artist. Yeah, we should issue licenses, you know? <laughs> yes, it's, it's true. There are too many imposter spoken word artists. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, uh, my spoken word uh, ID. Credentials. <laughs> 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 with the rhythm set in motion. A brew of back streets and potions, sidewalk and signs, it's got its own design. Parks and playgrounds, take a look around. Just roads, pavement, concrete, buildings, people passing by, a backdrop of things. Nah, there's a meaning, a certain kind of feeling. They all mark out a history that may seem like a mystery to some who come in from the outside. Then there's the freaky side. I mean the guys talking to nobody. No birds in the tree. 
in reality sometimes disagree, but they fit in. No one has to get them in a plan because to live and let live is how it stands. And then the summer sun comes out hot and direct, so I step, ride a bike, see the sights, go where I like. Got my shades, shorts, t-shirts, and running shoes on. In my head, there's a thousand different songs. There's an inner beat as I ride. I take this to my countryside. Neighborhoods got poetry, diversity, and style. Yeah. So many parts of this funky city space. So many thoughts and personality to each and every face. It's a neighborhood. Well, you know something? One of the earliest things I did as a poet, I was living in Montreal. And we were just workshopping some stuff. I had written a little stuff before, but nothing too heavy. And a guy on a, a rooftop, turned out his name was a guy called uh, Justin, who's uh, actually a rapper and an artist in Montreal. And I was on a rooftop, and, and, and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm practicing this little thing I wrote. He said, let me hear it. Like, he said, that's pretty good. You should write some more. <laughs> and you know, it was very encouraging to me. Even though I had written from small, but I hadn't really you know, gotten much of it out to people. So, so I was joining with this group, this political group, like a student group, they were called, also known as X. And they were protesting the shooting of a young black man by police in Montreal. So they asked me to come do some poems with them at a, at a function they were having to raise awareness of this event. So that's kind of how I got into it. A lot of it was like student social activism too. Now you can experiment with using music, with music costumes, with music video, with music, maybe somebody singing with you. you know, there's a lot of elements that you can explore from theater, music, and other related forms, so that's great. And it helps in expanding your, your vision, you know what I'm saying, and, and pacing a, a set. So in, even in the most elemental, like pacing a set is, yeah, you might do a piece that is pretty cheerful and upbeat, and then maybe you have to do a piece a little rougher, mm -hmm. some piece very political, some piece is like a little funny piece. So that pacing is important because there too, you're, you're helping to engage people. So that's important in, in engaging and in the fluency, and in adding a nice flow and tempo to what you do. 